Hey everybody, welcome to my All About iPhone 10 video. In this video, I'm going to share with you all of the information about the iPhone 10 that Apple has released so far and dig a bit deeper into the new control scheme for Apple's first iPhone without a home button. iPhone 10 is a new premium Apple smartphone that's virtually bezel-free, made out of surgical-grade aluminum and a type of glass that's supposed to be the most durable glass ever in a smartphone. With Apple's first OLED display, they call the new Super Retina display. The phone is supposed to be both water and dust resistant and will be available in two colors, silver and space gray. The iPhone 10 has a 5.8 inch display with a resolution of 2436 by 1125 and 458 pixels per inch or PPI. It supports both wide color gamut and has a super high contrast ratio of 1 million to 1. Of course, it still has 3D touch and is a true tone display that will change the color tones depending on the ambient lighting to produce the most accurate colors. Should be great for photography. Speaking of photography, the iPhone 10 supports dual 12 megapixel cameras on the rear of the phone, one with a telephoto aperture, the second with a wide angle aperture to help create high quality photos with varying special effects such as a bokeh effect and they are also required for the new portrait lighting feature. Both cameras have optical image stabilization a new color filter for deeper pixels, and a new faster autofocus system to capture HDR photos with even greater depth. The processing hardware behind this is really quite powerful. The iPhone 10 is run by a new 64-bit 6-core A11 Bionic processor that contains two performance cores and four high-efficiency cores that are capable of 600 billion operations per second. And the new Apple-designed 3-core GPU is said to be up to 30% faster than the previous A10 Fusion. This chip setup is also what powers the magic behind the new Face ID authentication technology and many of the new speedy features included in all of the iPhone 10's cameras. The iPhone 10 has two front-facing cameras as well that serve multiple purposes. They can be used as great selfie cameras, are also the integral part of the new Face ID feature that is replacing Touch ID on the new iPhone 10. These front-facing cameras are referred to by Apple as a true depth camera. Face ID is enabled by the True Depth camera as it projects and analyzes more than 30,000 invisible infrared dots on your face to create a precise depth map. Apple says that Face ID is even more secure than Touch ID as the odds of someone spoofing it are far less than that with Touch ID. Unless, of course, you have an evil twin. Face ID also uses machine learning so it can adapt to physical changes in your appearance over time. So this should work well as we age, which I think was a good thinking on Apple's part. The True Depth camera system on the front of the iPhone 10 will likely end up finding a number of new uses over time as well. But the first fun looking one is a new Apple Messages and Emoji. The True Depth camera analyzes more than 50 different muscle movements to mirror your expressions in 12 different Emoji to help you send some fun and friendly new messages and help you reveal your inner panda, pig, or even robot. I really want to check out that unicorn one though. That looks kind of cool. The True Depth camera system also allows you to apply many of the rear camera effects to your selfies now, such as the bokeh effect and the new portrait lighting effect as well. I just hope it does retina flash too. No word on that anywhere I could find yet. One of the new features that everyone has been waiting for for a while is a new wireless charging feature. The iPhone 10, as well as the other new iPhones announced today, now support wireless charging. The wireless charging feature uses a Qi charging standard, which is already pretty widely available to our Android friends. This should speed up the adoption of wireless charging across the industry. Many cafes, hotels, and airports already offer these charging pads, so this is a major win for everyone. On a side note, Apple also introduced a new air power charging mat that will also work with Apple Watch Series 3 and a new optional AirPods charging case to allow you to charge all of your devices on one mat. This looks super handy. I can't wait to find out more about this. The air power mat is supposed to be released sometime in 2018. The iPhone X's marketing materials indicate it has a battery life that is two hours longer than that of the iPhone 7, so that shouldn't be too bad. Hopefully that will let us get the day out of it. As for the new control scheme to accommodate the lack of a home button, it seems like it will be a bit of a change, but looks like it will be easy to get used to. When you want to close an app or get back to the home screen, you just swipe up from the bottom. When I saw this in the demo, it looked really cool. To access Control Center, you swipe down from the upper right hand corner. This will take some getting used to. Swiping up for Control Center is such a no-brainer nowadays. It's like muscle memory. From what I understand, you swipe down from the left corner to access Notification Center. Overall, the new user interface isn't super different. Just a couple of new tweaks to how you use your iPhone. 
The new camera features of the iPhone X are also supposed to help create the ultimate experience for augmented reality apps. Coupled with the new software enhancements to iOS like ARKit and Metal 2, both the cameras and the new A11 Bionic processor in the iPhone X are supposed to create the ultimate AR experience. Now I guess we'll see what apps actually make use of this setup and determine then how that goes. The iPhone X will be available to order on October 27th and available to purchase November 3rd. It will be available with two storage capacities, 64 gigabytes and 256 gigabytes with a starting price of $999 US. I'm in Canada and I found out that the 64 gigabyte model will be $1,319 Canadian. Whoa, that is expensive, but I think it will be worth it. Well, everybody, that's all we know about the iPhone X so far. Did we miss anything? If so, let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, feel free to give us a thumbs up. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more tech videos, including tech how-tos, every week. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.